Okay, so just to show you again, I'm gonna pull extremely tight and I'm gonna pull, okay, there we go. Okay, so I got those two teeth around the ring. Okay, now what I do, and this is just for the sake of mounting the guides and the tensioner just so that the chain doesn't want to keep popping off or you don't have to keep resetting it, okay? It's not going to stay on here for those of you getting all worked up about it, okay? Obviously, you guys, it's the one that only has one pivot point, and that pivot point goes up in here. Sometimes you gotta work it up like this, where you gotta fish it halfway in the chain. Oh, there goes my zip tie. So I was trying to hold that to, to make it easier for the video to show you guys, but you know what? Wait a second, why didn't it even grab? It's a broken zip tie, that's why. So anyways, don't worry about your slack. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to pop this chain over the guide. Okay. Just making sure the chain doesn't move time or anything goofy like that. We're gonna come down here and reset it so we build the slack back up. And then now, we got our guide on there, okay? Now we gotta mount the forward guide. Oops, my bad guys. Forgot to hit record. All we're doing right now is um, just running in our bolts for the guides. We're not actually tightening anything yet. Remember this one was the long, very long bolt down there. Okay, now what you're gonna run into is that the, it's gonna constantly wanna hop out of time on the crankshaft side. Okay, so my advice, get these snug enough where this guy doesn't wanna move a ton. Okay, and then what you need to do is you need to squeeze the crank. Just like that down here. Okay, so you're squeezing these together. Then you come in with your tensioner and you mount your tensioner. And then once your tensioner is mounted in here, it'll have enough uh, tension on it just resting that the chain won't really want to hop around too much. But before you pull the pin, absolutely 100%, you have to make sure that you're still in time on all your marks. So that is where you're going to want to take your crank bolt and run it back in. And the reason that I say that is because what we need to do is we need to pull it into a tight tensioned position. Uh, where's my 18? Okay, so I don't recommend you guys do this with an impact gun, but. Okay, now I just put some forward tension on it so it's at least grabbing down here but again before you set your tensioner in that's the last thing you do is make sure that you're in time on the crank side down there and I wish I could put you guys on the other side but you'll be in my way at that point all right we got our new tensioner here's the way I recommend doing it now obviously the piston of the tensioner goes towards the guide the way that I recommend doing it is you put the frontmost bolt in the tensioner. Okay. Simultaneously press your timing chain on, make sure it is tight. Come back this way and pull, literally pull on the tensioner. Now I'm in a position where I can run it in, which is good. Okay, so as you can see, and I know you guys, pretty sure you can see that, the back of this tensioner is resting against the block, right? 
the guide is now being pressed by the tensioner. Now there's a recessed lip area here that it's catching on. So what we got to do is take this and pull it out slightly like this and then rotate the tensioner up and into its position. Okay. A lot of you guys will start yanking on it and you'll be fighting the ridge on the plastic here. So now what we're going to do is take this, make sure it's lined up. It's really hard to thread right there. So I'm going to lift up a little higher. Now it just got very easy to thread. Okay. So, and I'm not torquing with the gun. I'm just making sure it is snug. So now come and double check that the tensioner is in fact in the recess, which it is right in this little recessed area here. Okay. Now don't pull the pin, don't get all crazy. We need to torque um, all of our fasteners, guides, all that kind of stuff. So, I'm looking for tools while I'm talking to you guys. Okay. All right, a couple of things to be conscious of. Um, I've already torqued this guide. Okay, that's already done. This one has a bolt that goes in right there that I've not put in yet, okay? Now this is where you go around and you literally double check everything you may or may not have done yet. Now, torque everything tensioner, everything, okay? Before we pull the pin, before we double check our timing. So, I'm gonna take this, 89 inch pounds. Or at least I'm gonna try, there we go. Same with this one. Okay, same with this one. There we go. That's that really long bolt, so don't forget about that one. Now our tensioner, same thing. Okay. Now the tensioner, I'm gonna yield it just a little bit. I don't want this coming off ever. Okay, so I'm gonna lift you up here. Check, make sure that's aligned, okay? We know these back cams didn't move. We're not worried about that. They were put together in a position where they couldn't really hop or skip. This one, perfectly on the index mark, okay? This one over here, perfectly on the index mark. The crankshaft detent, okay, as you guys can see there, the two gold teeth perfectly in the middle of the index, okay? So now, I'm going to set you guys back on the stand here. Now, double check our guides. Make sure the chain's in on all of them. It is normal to have a little bit of slack here. That is from when we did the rotation, okay? Perfectly normal. And then what we're gonna do, and some guys, uh, Some guys will disagree with me on this, some will agree, but what I always go do is I put a little bit, just a little bit of forward tension on the crank, okay? And the reason I do that is because it allows for more slack back here when I initially pull the tensioner. So I go, just put a little bit of pressure on it and see how we're starting to get tight. Okay. That's a, a good amount of force there. 
we're all still lined up, still double check. We now have a lot more slack than we had, okay? Before I pull the tensioner, I always put my finger here, okay? It, this is on all engines. I always put a little bit of pre-tension on it first. Again, go back, double check. There we go. So at this point, we are all set, okay? Here's the, uh, the most important part of doing jobs like this, guys. And I can't stress this enough. Before you put the cover on, okay, take your oiler and oil all the chain components. Lube everything up, okay? The last thing you want is the first 20, and I shouldn't say 20, the first five to 10 seconds of this engine running just dry chafing across these guides and just scoring the crap out of them when they're brand new, okay? That's not what we want to have happen. So, if it was me, I'd take my oiler and pour oil down the front here, down the front here. I'd soak this with oil around the guide area, and then I would soak around behind both of my primary chains. Now, here's the other thing to think about. <laughs> when you're doing the oil on it you also need a smooth clean surface to seal the timing cover to so it may not be the most ideal to oil it before you put the cover on you're just gonna have to kind of you know factor that in yourself and I'm talking about timing in general not this one this one in particular I'm actually going to oil everything re-clean it and then put the cover on so I'm not gonna film the whole cover installation, you guys. It is super self-explanatory. The biggest thing is you just need to make sure on every flat flange area that you have sealant, okay? So here, here, and here all need to have sealant on them. So this is the current status of the engine. Yes, I painted the timing cover. You know we had to go black. Hey, speaking of, now that this paint is dry, gotta give it that factory look, duh. There we go chain is done i say timing chain it was the timing chain tensioners guides and water pump all installed uh, i used ultra gray on the cover here a very thick layer got a nice squeeze all the way around it so that's all installed